Right, hi there everyone. So in this video, we're going to go through questions 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 that you completed on your recent assessment. Okay, so let me share my screen with you and we'll get cracking. Okay, so this is a question we're going to go over first of all. Let's pop you guys here. There we go. Right, so um, above the map, it says that you need to study figure 13. Um, it's a 1 to 50,000 ordnance survey map. Um, which means that one centimetre on the map is 50,000 centimetres in real life. Um, and it's of the River Ouse um, in the UK. And what you need to do is state one characteristic of the course of the River Ouse in grid square 4754. And it's only worth one mark, so it should take you only one minute in the exam. Okay, if it takes you longer, leave it, move on, and see if you can go back um, to it to the end. Okay, so first thing I'm going to go over then is how to work out a four figure grid reference. And there's some very clear instructions here. If you want to pause the video and write them down, and um, that is absolutely fine. Okay, otherwise, stay with me. So, 4754 um, needs to be separated into two sets of numbers. Okay, the first set of numbers are your Eastings, which is 47. The second set um, are your Northings, which is 54. So you need to go along the corridor. Here we go, to 47, then stop, then up the stairs to 54, and then stop. Okay, that brings you to the bottom left corner of the box you're interested in. So this is a grid square, uh, which the exam question is referring to. And as you can see in this grid square, the river is meandering. It's bending its way around um, this open floodplain, which looks to be in the lower course of the river, as there are very few contour lines on that map, suggesting it's wide and it's very flat, okay? So you could have quite simply written, the river meanders, it is meandering, or you could have written as well, if you look at the bottom of the slide, it flows from the southwest to the northeast. Okay, so by characteristic, we are referring to what something looks like. So if you were to describe someone's characteristic, their physical characteristics, you might refer to their height, their hair colour, their eye colour, things like that. It's the same thing for geography. If you just are asked to describe the characteristics of a landform, you're being asked, what does it look like? Okay, what are its typical features? Right, so for the next question, which is give the difference in height between the river floodplain at 481561 and the spot height at 460563, um, you need to be able to interpret six figure good references. So as you can see here, the level of challenge has increased quite significantly from 4.1 to 4.2. OK, the examiners there are also expecting you to be able to interpret height on a map. OK, so on a map, we show height by um, in a number of ways. On OS maps, we show height through um, contour lines, which are here. So you see this orange line here, which is going down from the north towards the south. Um, that is a contour line. You can see there's, there's a few of them on this map. There'll be more if we were in the upper course, but as we're in the lower course where the land is relatively flat, um, there are fewer contour lines and they're normally more spaced out. So this one here says 30, which means um, at all points along this line, um, the land is 30 meters above sea level. Okay, so we also show height on a map through something called spot height. Now, this is where a number is written on a map um, to show the exact um, height at a given point. OK, so if we have a look at this one here where it says 46 and then there is a blue triangle with a blue dot in the middle. Now, the 46 is a number of meters above sea level. So this point is 46 meters above sea level. And the triangulation pillar, which is a spot height, tells you that this is the highest point in this area. OK. There are a few more um, on other maps. Um, actually, there's another one here. So this point here is 14 metres above sea level. 
okay? So what you then need to be able to do is um, decode a six-figure good reference. Now, as you can see, we have an extra number after the first two numbers, the Eastings here. So we've got four, eight, which is your Easting, which is there. And then we've got the number one. Then we've got your Northern values, which is um, in this case is 56, which is there. And then you've got one. Now this third and sixth value number um, tells you how many tenths across um, that grid square you should go. So you need to imagine it's divided into 10 from um, say, for example, this point, 48, and this point here, um, 49. Okay, so let's let's practice. Let me go out of this and I'll grab this little, little um, circle. Right, so imagine um, your pencil is um, on the A. So the point of your pencil is on the A and you're trying to figure out where the six-figure good reference is. So you start off by going along the corridor, along the easting. So you go across to 48, and then you need to go one tenth across, which is probably about there. Okay. If it was 485, you'd be halfway across the box, which is there. If it was 489, you'd be really close at 49. Okay. If it was any further, you'd be onto the next easting, which would be 490 if you were on this blue line. Okay, so let's go back. So we're on 481, which is here. We then need to go to 561 or 561. So we go up the stairs to 56. And then we go one tenth up, which is there. So if I move that A across the screen, you can see there is a number 14 there, a spot height. So that is one of the points you needed to find 14 meters above sea level. Right, let's have a look at. Um, B then so we need to go to 460563 so we need to go across to 46 and then we stop we don't go any further because the number after 46 is zero meaning the features on that line we then need to go 563 so up the stairs to 56 and then three tenths up you can probably guess where we go I'm going to that triangulation pillar pillar which is 46 right so let's have a look at those grid squares in a bit more detail. So here they are. A is the top one, B is the bottom one. What you need to do is you need to give the difference in height between those two points. So quite simply, take the smaller value away from the large value, and the answer is 32. Okay? Right. So last question I'm going to go over in this video is... Um, this one here so 4.3 describe the shape of the river's long profile now students always get confused between uh, these two terms the long profile and the cross profile the definitions for each are here the long profile is the grading of the river from the source to the mouth so this diagram here this this graph here shows you how the gradient the steepness of slope changes as you go from the start of the river, which is way up in the mountains, um, might, for example, our local catchment, it might be in the Peak District, there'll be a small boggy area of water atop a hill, that would be the start of a river. Okay, although it's small, it doesn't really look much, it just looks like a pool of, of water and water or grass, it is the, the actual, uh, it is the start of a river. Okay, so the source is on this left hand side here. And then the long profile shows how that steepness of slope changes as you go away from the source towards the mouth. So, so this will be the coastline here. OK, living in Manchester, we are quite um, well, the area around our local town is quite flat. That's because we are in the, the middle to lower course reaches of um, the rivers in our area. OK. Now the cross profile is the side to side cross section of a river. So it's how, the, it shows how the width of the river, the depth of the river changes um, in the different courses. So upper course, middle course, and lower course. So these diagrams here show um, that cross profile of the river. So as you'll see in the upper course, the valley is steep and the channel is shallow and narrow. And in the lower course, the valley is very wide and flat. Um, whereas the channel um, 
the channel is also sorry wider um, and it is also deeper although i don't think that diagram shows that very clearly rivers become wider and deeper as you flow from the upper course to the lower course so the question asks you to describe the shape of the river's long profile so how does the shape of the long profile change as you go from source to mouth okay so you would have achieved one mark if you would have said that the shape is concave meaning it goes inwards you could have written that it's very steep in the upper course here i mean look at the gradient the change in height so just between zero and five kilometers from source the height has dropped by over a hundred meters which is significant it's quite a lot that um whereas here for that same change in height it takes let's see 100 meters probably there um i see from this point to this point it takes around about 35 kilometers um, from source to do the same drop okay that is um again significant so you could get a mark for saying that it's really steep in the upper course and then it becomes um more gently sloping um towards the lower course Okay, there is a video here that you could watch, um, which will be saved as PowerPoint. Okay, so I'd advise watching this if you want to know a little bit more about cross profiles, long profiles. Okay, so hopefully that's been um, of some help to you. Um, I definitely advise carefully reading the questions, picking out the keywords, check whether it says long profile or cross profile, and also check whether the question is asking you to describe the river channel or the river valley. Okay, usually they try and trick, the examiners try and trick students up by saying describe the shape of the river channel. Um, however, if they describe the shape of the river valley, the sides around the river, um, for example, being steep in the upper course and wide and flat in the lower course, then you can, then mistakes can be made quite easily. Okay, so thank you for listening. Hopefully it has been helpful to you guys.